Hi, my friends. So we're going to continue our shadow work conversation today and take a little bit of a turn and think about consumption. Now, that's a hot topic for those of us in our tarot community. And I think uh, there's a lot of folks who are thinking about this in terms of taking depth ears. And of course, Marie Kondo's show is very popular right now in terms of diminishing or reducing clutter and uh, the stress that comes with it. Now, you can see the shelves behind me, so you know that I'm not going to say anything super controversial because I'm clearly a consumer. But I, uh, I do have some thoughts, and I think that one of the things that we can do as a community uh, in addressing the universal shadow is think about our consumption a bit and the implications of it and how to consume more thoughtfully. We are, you know, by nature consumers. It's a very human thing. And I think part of the psychology of these animals that we are has to do with a very fight or flight attitude to a lot of things. And one of those is a tendency to have and keep. It's, we're very territorial. And that's, you know, I don't think we can really address that. I think in a way it's hardwired into who we are. But when we consume a lot of anything, there are impacts. And I think if we address and consider and consume more thoughtfully, we can have a bigger impact and a more positive impact on the world around us. Now, like I said, you know, you can see the shelves behind me. What you can't see is the table over here and the array of shit on the desk in front of me. You know, I'm, I'm a person who, in a weird way, kind of exists in a state of clutter. So it's not about, this isn't about consumption shaming. Uh, because that would be disingenuous. <laughs> and I try not to do that. But, you know, think about, uh, think about decks. Tarot decks are made of paper, and that paper comes from somewhere. So in order to create a tarot deck, there is a paper consumption. Ink is made, and ink consumes resources. The technology and printing process, the packaging process, the shipping process, all of that consumes resources. So for a deck to make its way to our tables, a lot of resources are consumed. And so, you know, again, we're like, this isn't to say it's bad that we do that, but we, um, I think we have to consider those resources. I think we have to see a tarot deck both for the sum of its parts and the joy that it brings us as it sits on our tables and as it gets used and as we work with it and, and help ourselves and others. But it's also helpful for us to think about the fact that it didn't just arrive from thin air. You can think about uh, books in the same way. Think about incenses and candles in the same way. One particular thing that I'm really interested about, and I haven't heard a whole lot of conversation about it, but I am curious, and if anyone has any resources, please let me know, are crystal mining. What are the consequences of that? Clearly, these are natural elements that are in the earth, that mining itself probably has some kind of natural consequence. I would imagine that there are limited reserves of things. So what is the impact of a crystal and how is it sourced? Is it, you know, is it a case of, of diamond mining? Are there a lot of nefarious elements at play? Or are there uh, ethically safe and ethically sound sources for crystals? So things like that, you know, there's a lot of... It's not just that we get on Amazon, and I think that's it's easy to do. I do it every day. You know, I hop on the computer, I think I want that, and I get it. It shows up. And uh, I either use it or not. Oftentimes, it ends up back there. Uh, and but that but it didn't just it, it it's there's more to it than just me getting wanting it and getting it. There's a whole series of events and resources that are taken up and used in order to to make this you know reach my table right. So that's what this is about. It's it's not about con consumption shaming. Uh, anyone it's or anything it's about being more thoughtful 
and considering the consequences of our consumption beyond our immediate desire to have and want. So this spread focuses on that. Really, it's a series of spreads. So as I have done all along, I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera. Well, I'm actually going to do the readings on the table and take pictures and put them in PowerPoint, but you don't really need to know about that. You don't care. But I'll take you through it. So that's what this is about. It's about uh, how our consumption contributes to the universal shadow slash how thoughtful con <laughs> thoughtful consumption might help reduce that shadow. All right. So that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, as always, I hope this is interesting. We'd be curious to hear your thoughts once you go through this yourself. And uh, we'll talk soon. Be good. All right. So as I said in the introduction, this isn't really an effort to shame anyone. And it's fair to say that I am an enabler as much as anyone else. <laughs> and my walkthroughs and unboxings are the most viewed videos and generally the most liked videos on this channel. And... I never really intended to do those. It's just that folks requested them, and I'm happy to oblige. I also enjoy doing them. And those walkthroughs and unboxings done by other people have, you know, prevented me from probably buying as many decks as, you know, I've, I've not, or that have prevented me from buying as many decks as I have bought. <clears throat> um, so this isn't, you know, this isn't, throw out everything and, and have uh, a completely ascetic lifestyle. It's just about thinking again in terms of the ripple effects, the consequences of the things we do, so that when we do make the choice to consume, it's thoughtfully done and we have considered the impact. That's the goal. So here's how the spread works. Uh, it's a little different from previous ones. And, and what I did differently was I took away the usual position five, which is how do I check my progress, primarily because this is the kind of thing you would repeat these steps every time, you know, to, to you, you are choosing to consume. But you could always add that. So the first position is show me one way in which my consumption contributes to the universal shadow. So sort of what are the consequences, the global consequences of my actions? <clears throat> Two, show me one way consumption contributes to my personal shadow. So where do I, as a, an individual, fit in and experience the shadow impacts of consumption? Three is show me one sign that I am not practicing thoughtful consumption, which is really what the goal is here. And then four is two sets. Show me two ways I can become more actively or I can more actively practice thoughtful consumption. So as I have said all along, I do tend to do this in sets of three cards rather than one. I find that really valuable, but it's entirely up to you. So I'm going to go through. I would say that this is really a personal example from my experience. I did you know, work through this relatively thoughtfully and relatively quickly in order to, to do this example. I probably, you know, would take more time than I did, but actually things kind of sprang out pretty clearly to me. And so the first set of three, the first position in the spread is show me one way in which my consumption contributes to universal shadow. And, and so here I got the hermit, the king of swords and the two of wands. And I struggled with this one, to be honest until <clears throat> I remembered a conversation I had had with a close friend recently about the way I see myself in the community versus the way that people who like and know my work see me. And there's a gap there. And, you know, it's if I my my influence may be relatively small, but I do have some influence to folks who trust me. And so I suddenly saw myself as using a position of trust and authority to pull people in two directions, which in an interesting way is sort of what this video is doing, right? Or what this video in my in the context of my channel is doing, because I'm both considering asking everyone to consider shadow work and the idea of how we fit into global consumption um, and how even a tarot deck, for example, can have global implications. But at the same time, doing that in the context of uh, a channel that has many, 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 many videos that have enabled consumption. So, um, you know, that's something I really need to think about. I think that that's a fair point. 
you know, if I am going to talk about consumption or think about it myself, I have to also think about the impact I make by providing a, an, an enabling tool for others. And it's an interesting thing to think about, right? Um, do I make videos just for the sake of it, just to put them out into the world, just to hope that my subscriber base increases? Or am I more thoughtful about it? And, and do I, for example, refocus my energy on making unboxings or reviews of decks that I, uh, that I really endorse, for example, and that I think really need to be out in the world or that I would really like to help amplify voices? You know, one thing that gets talked about in, in the world is, you know, how do, how do you as a person of privilege um, or how do you as someone with a microphone amplify and whose voices are you amplifying? And, um, you know, one, one thing that I could do is really focus on works created by women, works created by people of color, works created by queer people, etc. <clears throat> As a white man, you know, use my small microphone to amplify voices of folks who have a harder time getting out into the world, right? Now, very complicated things come up with that. And like, we get into the saviorism thing I talked about in, in previous videos, but that's just one example. And if you have a microphone and you can help amplify other people's authentic voices who are speaking from communities, then that's one thing I could do, for example. So the second one was, how does it impact my own shadow? And this was an interesting one. And this combination um, I, I thought was really fascinating. The Magician is one of my favorite cards. And I always think about him as manifesting energy, but I think, you know, in, in when I'm when I'm engaging in thoughtless consumption, I'm really putting my energy into sort of a dance of of trying to find the perfect thing, of trying to find something that I'm totally drawn to and in love with. And in so doing, I'm not focusing on the practical work of what I do and who I am. And so I think that that is really interesting that when my focus is on consumption, I get completely distracted from my purpose and my practical purpose. So part three or, or section three is how can I tell or what's a sign that I'm engaging or that I'm not practicing thoughtful consumption? So how, you know, what's a sign? What's like a warning that I'm not engaging in this? And one of the reasons why I've talked about this before, one of the reasons why I really like to reshuffle after each set in these spreads is because I like when cards repeat. And the King of Swords appeared in my first um, spread of the, the universal shadow, of how I contribute to the universal shadow. Shows up again here as a sign uh, in, the, in the section about what's a sign that I'm doing that. And um, what did I put in my notes here? Let me just pull them up for a sec. Because uh, I had a lot to say. Um, so I wrote in my notes, despite my own knowledge, uh, I have a tendency to sort of feel longing... Uh, or to fill empty space, or to reclaim things that are lost, um, to, to sort of fill gaps emotionally with consumerism rather than using consumerism or consumption to balance and engage in temperance. In fact, I can have a tendency, and this is very true, I think a lot of us do, to engage in retail, retail therapy, and there are times when that's great, and there are times where it, it really doesn't work, and it makes us feel worse. And so temperance is an interesting card to show up in that space, because it is a matter of uh, balance. Am I engaging in balance? and Or am I being intemperate? Am I addicted? Or am I just trying to cram as much into my soul in the hopes that it'll fill a gap or a loss. I've been watching a lot of um, painting uh, restoration videos, and in the case of paint loss, they fill the gap with putty and then paint over it. So what is that? Am I filling that loss with something valuable or with just some putty to, you know, fill it in and make my hopefully make myself feel better? Not a, not a perfect analogy, but probably you get my point. So that's one way I can tell is that I know when I'm, you know, the King of Swords knows all our dark secrets the king knows when we're not being temperate and when we're trying to fill a gap that isn't really fillable with stuff so the last two things are uh, ways that i could be more thoughtful in my approach 
to consumerisms or consumption so thoughtful consumption and i love here that we go from the page of swords to the king of swords in this well we went from the king of swords rather to the page of swords and we've got the three of pentacles showing up here which is a repeat card from here uh my own personal shadow uh uh draw so what i discussed here in my notes was really in part by uh, by restoring myself to innocence in a way um you know, I think paid, going from the king to the page sort of suggests like resetting. But I, as a whole sentence, what I what I felt like this meant was approaching my work with an eye towards learning rather than entrapment. And uh, my purpose always was education in creating this channel, for example, and just my tarot work in general, because I'm an educator by nature. I love you know, I love teaching, I love making videos that are tutorials more than anything else in the world, and I love when people love them. Um, I loved writing Tarot on Earth. I love teaching writing workshops, which I used to do relatively often and don't so much anymore. But so uh, my my whole purpose is education, and the Page of Swords is someone who's looking for education. So the Three of Pentacles in this case suggests purpose, and the Page of Swords represents um, students. And so the purpose is focusing on the the learning and less about sort of feeling trapped by um stuff and uh building sort of a cage of consumer things it's not about not having it but again thoughtfully and what i like about this whole series of cards is that i had a lot of swords and you'll see more in the next one and that really is just again such an interesting way of considering thoughtfulness so this, just to summarize, was really about approaching it, approaching everything or what I do tarot wise, for example, from, again, more of a learning aspect. My purpose is learning and kind of turning a little bit more away from the things that tend to trap folks or entrap folks or enable in, in a way and uh, that stimulate the mind, which if you think about eight and swords, eight is effort and work. And uh, so there's, again, there's a connection to sort of the work of learning, the work of communicating. Um, so the focus is more about education and sharing and less about just throwing everything out as a way of, you know, I joke about my, my enabling tendencies a lot. And then the second way, so the last set of three was really about a, 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 just another example of something I could do to practice more thoughtful Cons consumption and with the ten of swords here i i use so ten sometimes as resolutions and so i think one thing that this suggested was to resolve within the mind to find joy in basic things including creating a space where people feel safe to learn and build and create and grow and to really resolve to find joy in doing that less than joy in sort of being an advertisement for things for example and uh also in my own life you know to to pursue my own learning and push my own learning rather than just sort of filling up the shelves with stuff that i um i feel like i want but don't necessarily want or need so so this is you know again i could go a lot deeper it's always interesting when you're doing these as personal examples it did sort of become a lot about my channel you know, I, and, and these are things I'll sit with because they're things that really have been on my mind. You know, what does it mean when I do a, a deck unboxing? There's some that I posted that I I took down because I just didn't like the way that I approached them or I had nothing nice to say about the deck, etc. Um, so I, I think this was an interesting exploration for me, and I hope it is for you. So again, it's not about not consuming we we're going to it's natural but it's about considering the implications of that and practicing our consumerism or our consumption thoughtfully and that's really the purpose of this and considering that our actions can contribute to the universal shadow or to the universal filling of that shadow with light so to speak so as always i really hope this was interesting and love to hear your experience with this and stay well <laughs>